Good. Thank you very much, and welcome to the June 19th Fisher City Council meeting. We have several announcements. Uh, the first one, the Fisher's Freedom Festival. Eric, would you mind doing that? Yeah, this, this is a long one, so bear with me. With over 50,000 attendees from all over the U.S., there is so something for everyone and your family to enjoy at the 29th Annual Fisher's Freedom Festival presented by Freedom Mortgage at Roy Holland Memorial Park. This free family event will host around 130 juried fine arts and crafts sites, 100 business booths, 100 business booths, 30 food vendors, and 20 free game booths. Activities include 5K event, canine demonstrations, children's tent, team tent with live bands, <clears throat> children's entertainment, disc dog competitions, kitty run, NASCAR simulator, huge blow up corn maze, <clears throat> giant light bright laser tag, four person Euro bungee, main parade, street dance, silent auction, rock climbing, dunk tank, and much, much more. The Wright Brothers will be on stage Saturday night, and Big Daddy Caddy will be on stage Sunday before the fireworks. <clears throat> the public may park at Holland Park for $5 per vehicle. There will be free parking at the Fishers Municipal Park Complex in the north lot of the Huda Foundation North Parking Lot. A free shuttle will run approximately every 15 minutes during festival hours to transport people to Holland Park and back. No parking will be allowed on Sunday on Ellipse Parkway or Holland Drive to the main parade, due to the main parade. The festival is free, so please consider, consider bringing canned goods, school supplies, new toys, personal hygiene items for our food, our food drive. The Boy Scouts will be walking the parade with grocery carts to collect items along the parade route on Sunday. <clears throat> Freedom Mortgage will be collecting backpacks with, with schools for the Indiana USO on Saturday at their booth. No coolers, outside alcohol, or personal fireworks permitted. Roy Holland Park is a smoke-free park and there's an ATM available. The Fisher's Freedom Festival Children's Parade will be Tuesday night at the Nickel Plate District Amp with registration beginning at 7 p.m. <clears throat> the parade will be during intermission. Registration and lineup will be in the old Fisher, Launch Fisher's parking lot just north of the Amp Stage Building. Come early to get parking. Thank you very much. Uh, we have two more announcements. Uh, Selena, would you do Destination Imagination? Sure. During the weekend of May 24th through the 27th, students from Hamilton Southeastern and Fishers High Schools traveled to compete in the world stage at the Destination Imagination Global Finals Competition at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville in front of a crowd of 17,000 and were crowned world champions. The Hamilton Southeastern School District competes in Destination Imagination which is a worldwide team-based problem-solving competition emphasizing science, technology, and engineering coupled with a performing arts component. Teams work on solutions to complex challenges for up to nine months, and depending on each team's success in lower-level competitions, compete at a week-long Globals final held each year at the end of May at the University of Tennessee. At Global's finals, almost 1,500 teams and thousands of kids from around the world compete to be crowned best in the world in five different challenges in three different <coughs> age groups. Elementary level, grades three to five, middle level, grades six to eight, and senior level, grades nine to 12. The HSE program is led by three HSE school district teachers, Kathy Seeds, Christy Seeds, and Robin Young, along with many parent volunteers. This year, the Hamilton Southeastern School sent 12 teams to the global finals competitions. Five of them came in the top 10 in their respective challenges and age group, including the senior level technical challenge team that came in first in the world. Members are Ben Mann. Is Ben here? Could you guys uh, come forward and step up here uh, yeah. as your name's called? Adam Fullhart. Silvana Gold. Mm -hmm. 
Gabby Puzella, Puzella, Sean Wiseman, Louise Hazel, Jenna Burrow. Congratulations to all of you, and along the same theme of HSC excellence, we have uh, the We the People team, and Cecilia, would you mind reading that? Sure. So the We the People National Invitational is comprised of eight teams from across the United States. The qualified contestants include middle and high school groups from Arizona, Colorado, Florida, Maine, Ohio, Oregon, Virginia, and Fishers Junior High School. The winning team must show an exceptional understanding of constitutional principles applicable to historical and current issues. Today, we acknowledge the team from Fishers Junior High School as the national champions in the We the People National Invitational held in Washington, D.C. on April 28th through May 2nd, 2017. So today, we want to acknowledge the members of the Fishers Junior High School team who participated in achieving first place in the We the People National Invitational. So as I call your name, if you could please uh, come up. McKenna Adams, Izzy Alexander, Adi Arena, Blake Bax, Jackson Backel, Mackenzie Boyer, Milan Kozaz Kozani, Joe Conde, Cameron Dean, Grace DeLong, Sydney Doyle, Madison Ewart, Faith Farrell, Maya Fotera, Abby Funk, Ray Gao, Abigail Garrison, Meg Gibson, Liberty Hayes, Morgan Joyner, Braden Kirkendall, Shay Coley, Ben Liley, Titiana Lockridge, Olivia Lux, Ali Mohammed, Cassidy Robertson, Gracie Skoll, Kara Van Dyke, Jonah Vanderkamp, and Bailey Wilson. And we want to also thank a special thank you to Mr. Mike Fazold for leading and teaching this great group of students. Could you please uh, give them a round of applause? Congratulations again, everyone. Uh, we'll move next to our presentations, and uh, we have the Fisher City Government uh, Academy graduation. Good evening, Council. For the record, my name is Dan Domsick with Fisher's Parks and Recreation. Uh, I actually have two presentations for you this evening, one uh, that you're very much familiar with and another that is a new initiative uh, that we're very proud of that started up this pack, uh, past academic year. We'll start with the one you're familiar with and that is the City Government Academy graduation. Uh, the Fisher City Government Academy, for those in the audience that don't know, is a free 10-week uh, program for Fisher's adults uh, that offers them an inside look at how their local government operates. They do everything from learn how our uh, public works department keeps our roads clear during the winter to how uh, Judge Hankey dispenses traffic tickets and uh, uh, hands out the justice. Uh, it's a significant time commitment. And uh, as we all know, if there's one thing that, that binds Fisher's residents together, it's their very, very busy schedules. Uh, so it's something that uh, we find as a cornerstone of community engagement and something that we really appreciate from our residents as they take time out of their day to, to come and learn about how their local government operates. 
Uh, some Government Academy alums have gone on to do other great things in and for Fishers. This includes serving as part of uh, the Government Academy alumni group, uh, working on boards and commissions, uh, serving on City Council, and uh, even co-founding the entrepreneurship juggernaut that is Launch Fishers. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to ask Mayor Fadness and Council President George to come up. Uh, new graduates, uh, when your name is read, uh, please walk to the front over here uh, for your customary congratulatory handshake. And uh, we'll uh, get a quick picture. Uh, once we have our picture, uh, please meet the Parks Director, Tony Elliott, on the lobby to receive your diplomas, and uh, we'll get going. Uh, we had a, a small class this spring, but they were mighty and curious and great to work with. So without further ado, uh, Adam Harness, Cecilia Shaw, Haley Waldcutter, James Grieg, Jason Arnold, Jason Dew, and Ken Jansen. Council, if it's all right, uh, I'm happy to go ahead and jump right into our second presentation and as for the Mayor's Youth Council. Uh, it's my honor to present our first group of students uh, that were leaders and completed our first ever Fisher's Mayor's Youth Council. Uh, the Mayor's Youth Council is a nearly academic year-long program in partnership with HSE schools. Uh, each month we have participants from HSE, from Fisher's High School, and uh, one student from Brebuff uh, basically have a chance to get hands-on and realistic experience with several different careers in the public sector. Uh, they did everything from uh, some uh, EMS drills, trying to do search and rescue out at the uh, training grounds up further north in Hamilton County, uh, to even uh, being asked to put themselves in the shoes of some of our most vulnerable residents. Uh, with this program, we hope to inspire a new wave of professionals and encourage them to change the world by starting right here in their own community. Uh, throughout the process, they've also designed their own park and pitched it uh, to us and really have accomplished some great things. Uh, uh, these students are scholars, athletes, leaders, thinkers. They have jobs. Uh, and at a very young age, this council has shown initiative by showing that no matter how busy you are and the challenges you face, it is incredibly important to be more engaged, not less engaged. I'm proud of these young Fishers residents, and while it is summer and some of them have uh, flown the coop, they are juniors and seniors in high school after all, all, we do have a few of them with us. So Mayor's Youth Council, uh, as your name is read, uh, please walk to the front. Again, for uh, your congratulations, uh, we'll get a quick picture, and then again, we'll meet back out in the lobby to get uh, your certificates. Uh, Mayor Fadness, is there anything you'd like to add before we call them up? Well, thanks, Dan. If this, tonight is not a testament to the, uh, the vitality of the young people here in uh, Fishers. I don't know what is. It's extraordinary to see the accomplishments of of the folks at We the People and uh, Destination Imagination, um, the entire group, it's really extraordinary. And uh, one of the things that uh, we were really hoping to do with this uh, Mayor's Youth Council is, you know, when I was growing up, I always felt and was motivated by being a part of something bigger than myself. And uh, I always assumed that there were other people out there like me. And uh, one of the things that we wanted to do was inspire and create an opportunity uh, for those students to see uh, what kind of possibilities are out there in the public service. And so uh, just like we have our Launch Fishers Fellowship Program, this hopefully provides an avenue for young people who are inspired by public service to see what kind of careers might be out there and see what kind of need there may be, whether that's touring a jail, whether that's visiting with nonprofit organizations, whether that's going through firefighter training, uh, and whether it's wrestling with public policy issues like we do 
uh, once a month here in, in this facility. So I'm really proud of the time and commitment these folks put into it. They were our first year, so they're our guinea pigs. And uh, they provided some really, really good feedback on how we can improve it next year. And, and Dan and I are already uh, dreaming and scheming about how we can uh, further improve this. So Dan, thank you for your time and effort on all these community engagement uh, opportunities and uh, look forward to welcoming them up front. Thank you, Mayor. All right, Youth Council, without further ado, as your name's called, please come on up. Uh, Councilor George, if you'd like to join us. <clears throat> All right. Claire Bainey, Stephen McKenzie, Madison Schwartz, Alarica Bowens, Emma Krell, Kevin Kwan, Sophia Silcox, Rachel Bilheimer, Neville McCo, Eli Hendricks, Jada Edson, Joe Bergen, Jack Hybers, Ariana Bailey, Kyler Manson, John Ryu, Hannah Scholl, Sarah Jacobs, and Adam Howard. I should also like to mention too that among this group, I know that we had at least one graduating summa cum laude and one that was already getting ready to join the Marines. Uh, so we're very, very uh, proud of this group and glad that we got to meet them all. Thank you, Mayor Fadness. Thank you, Council. Have a great evening. Thank you. We have one intern presentation. While they're filing out, I guess we can uh, get started to move the meeting along. Uh, Mr. Mayor, do we, do we have the intern presentation? What's that? Do, do we have an intern presentation? Oscar's, Oscar's uh, presenting that as we speak. I thought you were going right to seven. Sorry. I apologize. Right. So to continue the theme on young people and partnerships with uh, HSC, the Controller's Office has developed a relationship with the Academy of Finance. Uh, the Academy of Finance has a requirement for their students to have an internship, and uh, we provided that internship for them. While the two students I'm about to recognize uh, could have done nothing but file a paper or do mediocre tasks, they were given a pretty important task. Uh, and their work has led to an award that's called the Distinguished Bu Budget Presentation Award uh, that is presented by the Government Finance Officers Association. Uh, the association has 19,000 members. Out of those 19,000 members, only two Indiana cities received the award, us and a city that I'm not going to mention. <laughs> and. Uh, <coughs> This will be our 10th award that we receive. Uh, 10 years ago, a uh, young intern that became mayor uh, started this program. Uh, we've been receiving the award since, but uh, without further ado, I'd like to bring up uh, <clears throat> Jed Riego and Lydia Sang. If you guys want to come up here. They'll be receiving an award from the mayor that reads, for completing a year-long internship with the City of Fishers, Controller's Office, during your internship, you work on multiple projects that help support the city staff, guide current projects, and exemplify leadership in your community. Signed, Scott Fadness, Mayor. Both of these young people are going to uh, IU, and uh, the staff got them a little goodie bag for their trip. Oh, 
obviously came from Marusa. There's the pocket protector. Scott, that's, that's not funny, Scott. That's not funny. <laughs> Thank you. I do have to tell you a quick story about the talent and the caliber of these folks. I know we've got a busy night, but um, one day I was given a presentation sent to me from Oscar's office, <laughs> and uh, I looked through it and I said, okay, I get it. It was supposedly from an intern, but the level of sophistication on this, I said for sure, well, this is just Oscar trying to float an idea through his intern, because there's no way an intern was possible of doing the technical analysis that was done there. So I was about ready to uh, go yell at Oscar and say, yeah, don't use your interns as guinea pigs to throw these ideas towards me. Uh, and Leah came up and she goes, no, seriously, an intern did that. Uh, so there's some extraordinary talent uh, and we're very excited to have them. So thank you guys. Eric, do you have any updates on the finance committee? Yeah. Thanks, David. The, uh, the Finance Committee met earlier this afternoon and we went over a number of items, but uh, the items that we reviewed that we will be taking action on tonight are items 7, 9, 10, 11, 24, and we, all, and we passed those with uh, unanimous recommendation for uh, approval tonight. Um, Regarding, I think it's worth noting regarding the three uh, <coughs> issuance of bonds, uh, related to the issuance of bonds uh, refunding for the town of Fishers, those refundings are anticipated to save over a million dollars, about 1.1 in today's calculations. They have not been issued yet, so um, when those have been issued, we'll, we'll, we'll get those final numbers. We also talked about uh, the, we, get, we got a current update from Oscar and his team on the audit and that we are well underway to um, meeting the deadlines there in an initial uh, 2018 budget timeline where we should be receiving a rough draft in about 30 to 40 days on uh, personnel um, and the requests from the different departments after the, the mayor evaluates those requests. Um, and with that, unless there's any questions, that's the conclusion of the Finance Committee report. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much, Eric. Uh, consent agenda, is there a motion? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Motion by Pete, seconded by Todd. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, I'd like to ask the council if we could move number 14 to the front, <coughs> uh, the knowledge services team. I know that they're here and uh, if we could go ahead and have that go first and then we'll move back to the rest of the agenda. Sorry, Brandon, I didn't tell you before, but I know you're ready for whatever. Always, always <laughs> That's awesome. <coughs> and then I think there's a, a PowerPoint presentation. There's a few items here I'd like to maybe present the project generally, and then we can go through the uh, technical items if that's uh, agreeable to council. Uh, for the record, Brandon Dickinson, Director of Economic Development. Uh, we have before the council today the Knowledge Services uh, Project, which will include a few uh, items for vote, including the Economic Development Agreement, the uh, Declaratory Resolution, and the uh, SB1s as well. So I'll just kind of start out with uh, this PowerPoint presentation uh, that we have to just run through the project generally. Um, we're very fortunate to have Joe uh, and Julie from Knowledge Services here with us tonight. Uh, this was a project that's been many, many months in the works. Um, we were, we've been uh, excited for probably the last three months waiting when we could finally uh, uh, blow the lid on this and, and tell the world about it. So we were uh, excited earlier this month to uh, have the Lieutenant Governor out with us to uh, really kind of kick off the announcement at the, uh, at the site they're just north of uh, 106th and just, I'm gonna do my orientation here, just uh, east of uh, I-69, um, north of the uh, architectural brick and tile. Uh, brick and tile, it's an 18-acre project. Um, 
Knowledge Services is currently headquartered in, in Indianapolis, and they have roughly 1,500 employees nationwide with locations from uh, Maine to California, Arizona to Florida. So uh, other than Alaska and Hawaii, they touch every corner of the U.S., and, and they're all over the place, uh, and we're, we're honored to have them as uh, a Hoosier company. Um, they represent a number of clients, both inside Indiana, outside Indiana, uh, some pretty uh, impressive names, Disney, Fisher's Price, uh, Mattel, Papa John's, as well as a number of government uh, contracts and clients that they have, Indiana being one of them, and they're also in over 60 cities around the United States. Uh, the project was brought about due to rapid growth driven by the uh, market acceptance of cloud-based SaaS, software <coughs> service, uh, mobile applications. Uh, Knowledge Services began exploring possible new uh, headquarters locations due to the uh, rapid growth. And the 18-acre site along I-69, just north of uh, 106th Street, provides the campus, business environment, and quality of life to accommodate Knowledge Services' 80,000 square foot headquarters and allow for the long-term continued growth of their company. The project will encompass uh, 800 jobs to be employed from the Fishers headquarters, uh, aggregate payroll of $28 million by 2021, and uh, an approximately $18 million total capital investment, including land acquisition, construction, um, certification, software, hardware, et cetera. The uh, project uh, itself looks at a 10-year 85% abatement for real property taxes. Based on construction estimates, we anticipate that being approximately $1.2 million. And then there's also a $500,000 grant to construct and or rehabilitate the site. As many of you know, it's kind of sat vacant for quite a while there, uh, and, and Navient was able to come to an agreement to uh, dispose of the acreage here recently. And really the um, most exciting part uh, of this uh, man, is, the, uh, is the renderings. And for some reason, they did not make it into this. But I, I'll work on that. I have the um, renderings. And I bet Megan can run it back to them. We can get this up here for everybody to see. Do you have? Yeah. Well, no, it should be. <laughs> So embarrassing. My boss will never let me live this one down. Last month I choked on gum. Now, <laughs> now somehow the... Uh, there are a few interns talking for your job. That's right. right. I, I guarantee all of them are better at it than I would be. Um, well, well I, I, I think, Brandon, uh, without you having to scramble for that, you know, I will, I will reiterate, and I think many of you were at the announcement and saw, saw the vision of what Joe and Julie, and that was a week's worth of uh, charrettes, I think. So imagine given the right amount of time what, uh, what their vision is and what is so exciting about Joe and Julie is they live in Fishers, they're proud of this community, and any development that happens either because of their own company or because of the development that they have there, I think will be, only elevate Fishers as a, as a community going forward. So. This is not only investment in their company, it's an investment in their community. And I just think that's, uh, when you have opportunities like that, those are unique. And uh, we're just really, really grateful that they decided to be a, a part of our city. I so concur. With that, uh, and we'll definitely get those renderings out to everybody. They're, they're, they were posted there at the uh, site when we announced, uh, and we were able to get some PDF versions of it. And I uh, apologize that I've somehow deleted those out of this uh, presentation, but we'll circulate those. Uh, and then I can move on to the um, declaratory resolution as one of the items here for consideration and happy to answer any questions other than uh, where are the renderings at, Brandon. Uh, <laughs> council members have those, any. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. Julie, Joe, did you want to say anything? Or, <laughs> so, I mean, you could have an acceptance speech. Yeah. yeah. Say, okay. Are, uh, Maybe we have to get through 14, 15, 16. Or something, right? I know that they're happy to answer them. Um, I promised them we would try and get them in and out of here as soon as okay. possible. But, We've got a motion uh, by Pete, second by Rich. Rich. Mm -hmm. uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Congratulations. Brandon, do you also want to do 15 and 16 while you're up there? Sure. 15 is just for clarification. 14 was the designation of the ERA. Two more agenda items. One is to approve the EDA, and then the last one is to approve the SB ones. That's all been provided in the packet as well. Well, not to make Brandon forget anything else, I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve item 15. Okay. Unless there's other discussion as it relates to the economic development agreement. Second. Motion by Pete, seconded by John. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Now I'll Opposed. do the same thing for item 16, unless Brandon has that in his pocket to make a motion to approve. <laughs> motion by Pete, seconded by Todd. All those in favor say aye. 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 Welcome to the city, Joe and Julia. I think you guys will be terrific, so thank you. Maybe I could, if I could just kind of add on a little bit here. Uh, certainly welcome to, to the city of Fishers, your business. I know you already live here, and also having someone who lives here and has my business in Fishers, that 106th Street Interchange is, uh, is, has been a great addition for us. I, I know you'll look forward to having a very uh, nice, quick commute every day. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I will say, and, and for those of the audience who aren't familiar with the company, when you look at uh, the statistics of who and how many they employ, where they employ people, I mean, it, it couldn't be a more unanimous and quick decision, which I, I think everyone appreciates, but we appreciate what uh, the Belowskis are doing for us in Fishers and that they've decided to, to stay home. So thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you very much. So we'll go back to the beginning of the agenda, and for different council members, uh, we've got such a long agenda. We just knocked off three here real quick, but uh, I don't think staff would worry if we want to go ahead and make motions, not on any specific one, just if you feel that the information's there and we can pull that back and ask questions, but some of these things are fairly standard, so we'll get going, and if anyone feels that, feel free to jump in, and, and if others have questions, we'll pull it back and we'll ask questions. So uh, number seven is our first one. And that's just a renewal of a contract for our private auditor. So, for the record, Lisa Bradford, Deputy Controller of Operations. Uh, basically, it's the request to approve a resolution for a renewal of a contract with our private auditor, EKG. As you guys remember, may remember from last year, we underwent an extensive process to opt out of the State Board of Accounts audit and receive permission to engage with a private firm, EKG LLC. And in accordance with this act, we are allowed to renew our contract and ask the State Board of Accounts to extend this opt-out for another year. So we would like to request that the council approve this. Um, the value add, having BKD do our private audit has been just a great benefit for us. There's a level of sophistication and expertise that was lacking from the State Board of Accounts. So we just respectfully request that you approve this resolution so we can move forward with our opt-out. Lisa's home life will be significantly better if you use the BKD versus the state. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, and I wow. can I can surely chime in. Having the incumbent auditor continue as your auditor going forward, there's some efficiencies and certainly mm -hmm. some, you know, some things that make it even more efficient for next year. So uh, as as the one who knows how to do this stuff, I'll make a motion to approve. And, and I'll go ahead and second. I was going to make a motion right away, Lisa, but I did, I want to give you a chance at the podium since you don't get it that often. So. Okay. Well, John, congratulations. You made the motion. And Pete, you made the second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. Thank you, Lisa. I'm here all the time, so you don't have to hear me talk. If you all right. To. <laughs> council President George, members of the council, I'm here to present uh, resolution number eight, Chris Greisel, city attorney for the record. It's a resolution of approving a formal written commitment and use agreement by and between the city of Fishers and another broken egg. So as you may recall, during the 2016 legislative session, the city of Fishers was successful in obtaining four new three-way um, liquor licenses for our special downtown uh, revitalization area. Uh, pursuant to this legislation, the city may issue four new three-way permits to an owner of a restaurant located within that area. Last June, this council adopted an ordinance that required any uh, entity that wanted to take advantage of those permits to enter into a, a formal written commitment and use agreement with the city. And that's what's being considered before you here today. Uh, Ryan Craig, partner with Another Broken Egg, is here along with other representatives from Another Broken Egg who plan to locate on the Switch Building 
um, and open up here in just a few short months. Um, and so we're excited to have them. And, and before you tonight is that formal written commitment and use agreement. As a reminder, unlike other liquor licenses uh, that are issued through the state, these licenses are non-transferable. They run with the premises. Uh, if any of the use changes with another broken egg, ownership changes, we have the right to make recommendations to the uh, State Alcohol Commission to revoke that permit. Uh, but we're excited to have Ryan and his team on board. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Pete, seconded by Todd. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No, looking Thank forward to the much. opening. Congratulations. Oscar, number nine. Hello again, uh, for the record, Oscar Gutierrez, City Controller. If I may, Council President, if I could address item 9, 10, and 11 together. Yes, sir, uh, that's fine. It would make this go a little faster, although they'll have to be voted individually. Uh, the three resolutions you have in front of you is for the refunding of the 2009 Saxony Project, 2009A, which is existing infrastructure, infrastructure, and then uh, 2009B, which is uh, another portion of the existing infrastructure uh, project. We discussed this with the Finance Committee today at length to explain the process which we're going to do these three refundings. At the end of the day, as uh, Council Member Muller uh, explained, uh, the Series A will yield a net, a net savings of $396,000. Uh, the second one will be $318,000, and the last one will be $387,000. Uh, this are advanced refundings, meaning that we will have money in escrow until 2019 when they're eligible to be called. But because of the low interest rate environment that we currently have, knowing that it is going to be shifting the other way, uh, it is our recommendation that all three of these uh, refundings be approved. Uh, we also have Kelly McNeary from Key Bank who is uh, handling the refunding. If there's any more specific questions, you want to wave? Yeah. Thank you, Oscar. Can't give a motion to all three. You need to vote them on separately, Chris. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Which one are we on first? Number nine. Number nine, R zero six one nine one seven B. Motion by P. Second. Second by Eric. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Now I'll make a motion to approve item ten, which is C. Second. Motion by Pete. Second by Eric. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. And thirdly, I'll make a motion to approve item 11 or D. Second. So, uh, motion by Pete, second by Eric. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we're number 12, I think, Dale. Good evening. Uh, for the record, I am Dale Davis, a planner with City of Fishers. Uh, the next item up is a deficiency report for the police station. Um, a few months ago, you remember me coming before you with the police department garage. This is the station portion of the project. Um, under our unified development ordinance, if a city-sponsored project is not going to be able to meet any components of the unified development ordinance, we have to bring a deficiency report to the council uh, to be adopted. So this uh, deficiency report is addressing some of the specific uh, needs of the police station, so it won't necessarily be able to conform with uh, our nickel plate district code. One example being the uh, requirement of two stories for the entirety of the first uh, story of the structure. With the bays on one side of the garage and then the floor height differences, that's not going to work. That's just one of the examples. The intent of this request is not to just blanket not follow our zoning ordinance. This is to uh, really make this case work and make this case fit so our police station can stay in our downtown. So uh, with that, I'm happy to answer any uh, specific questions on this deficiency report. I have no questions. I'll make a motion to approve because I essentially understand this as being, you know, we're putting a building in our downtown and we want to build as efficiently as possible to set to the use. So really it's nothing more than that. <laughs> And, and we opt ourselves out of our own rules because it's serving our own citizens. So, correct. We're, we're trying stands. to we're trying to be as efficient with the timeline as possible. So, yeah. Motion to approve. So, motion by Pete, seconded by Todd. Any questions? I, I have a, a comment, um, and you know, and I guess um, I just want to better understand what this 
may entail, but my comment is that uh, the concern I have related to this is that um, we're, we're being, we're, we're universally applying the standards that we, we set forth for um, you know, private development within the area and the city. Now, having said that, um, I recognize that part of the challenge that we have as a, a city is to be as efficient uh, and, you know, make sure that we're uh, following the budget that, you know, we, we don't want to spend any more than we absolutely have to, but, you know, the, the, the problem I have is, and I guess I just need to better understand what some of these deficiencies are, but there are items that I noted, I mean, I guess there were, what, five or six of them that were listed um, that, you know, vary from what the standards are, and, you know, I think maybe it's as much me wearing a, a developer hat and the expectation that, you know, we, we as a community place on the development community, so that's, that's where I just need to better understand what's involved than just, I guess, to approve that at this point. So at this time, I'm not comfortable with it because I just don't understand enough. Go. Go. Motion and a second, I believe, is on the table. Okay. We have a motion and a second for, uh, for this. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Number 13, Brandon, you're back. Evening, everybody. Um, to save face, I want to explain what happened. So um, it's, okay. it's great Let it go. that we have. Let it go. <laughs> Move on. Yeah. Move on. Yeah. So apparently there's an option. So apparently there is an option in slideshow to gray out slides that don't show up in presentation mode. So Joe watched this happen but thought it was way funnier to watch me just kind of burn. And so he didn't say anything, but um, we do actually have them. They are in the slideshow. But I also said that, I also said that if I said it, this, guy would be like, Joe's just being nice and trying to you know, help you out. You, you're an idiot and you forgot to put it in there. Moving on. Anyways. Um, the next item, uh, resolution approving First Amendment to Economic Development Agreement. Um, Braden Business Systems, uh, which everyone's familiar with, uh, they're building the um, new 45,000 square foot uh, headquarters right out here on Municipal Drive. And there were a couple of items that had occurred during construction. The <coughs> land, uh, part of the deal was the city provided land uh, for the project. Uh, surveys and actually even environmental studies were, um, were unable to detect that there were a number of grain silos underneath the uh, concrete and so there were some significant um, site work costs that uh, incurred there and then also when we did the uh, pro forma and we did the project that was based on a 35,000 square foot building uh, and they actually built a 45,000 square foot building and that extra 10,000 square feet is going to allow us to bring some other great companies into Fishers. So with, uh, with those things kind of put together, uh, we felt that it most, uh, it'd be most equitable to amend their um, EDA to allow for two more years of abatement at 70% in those final two years. You may also remember that the abatement schedule that they were awarded was based on them uh, also purchasing a warehouse here in Fishers, which they did in the uh, north by or the uh, Northeast Commerce Park, rather. So, with all those things um, taken into consideration uh, for your review, uh, we bring before you this amendment to the uh, EDA. Uh, and again, it comes out to approximately ninety-three thousand dollars is the uh, adjusted amount. Of, an, uh, of abatement dollars in those uh, last years, years six and seven. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I will tell you, um, the police station has run into the same issue. They pulled out a 35 foot, three foot thick piece of concrete uh, out of the dirt uh, over there that was attached to the other part of the silo. So uh, we should have looked at those pictures, I guess, on uh, on the wall that showed a two large silos along the railroad. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's been an issue in both of those projects. Historic and iconic silo, Scott, I'm sure. Right. So. Any questions for Brandon? No, I'm gonna make a motion to approve and I appreciate all the hard work that was put into this. Appreciate certainly a Braden sticking with it. I know the extra costs that they've run into and they're still committed to uh, building that building here at Fishers and offering 
you know, another corporate headquarters for here. So again, I think it's uh, well worth it, and uh, I'm happy to have them here. Thank Is there you. A second. Motion by Pete, seconded by John. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstain. And one abstention. Okay, Thank 14, you. 15, and 16, we went through. So now we're going to switch to ordinances. So number 17, Dale. David, number 17 yes, and 18 have both been continued. Okay. Move on to number 19. Good evening, Council. For the record, uh, Tony Bogato, Director of Planning and Zoning, and I do have my pictures in my presentation. Yeah. See that, Brandon? That's the other there. <laughs> and this is not the right one. So awesome. And that's what I get. I got the wrong slide, so I shouldn't have said anything. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's too many options up here now. Same cover picture, but. So this project is the Delaware Commons PUD. It was already before the City Council for first reading and went to Plan Commission um, and received <laughs> approval. The area that's known as Del Delaware Commons is where LA Fitness and Fresh Market is located today, just north of 116th Street and west of Cumberland Road. Shown in the green area here is the expansion called Delaware Commons PUD. It was rezoned, as I mentioned last time, to employment nodes. So to do straight retail in the employment z node zoning district, you have to do petitioner would have to ask for a new PUD. And this is the request to expand that existing commercial center. We've been working with this petitioner um, since February. And this, this plan has come a long way. They've been um, very agreeable with staff and making changes to be more in line with our Fishers 2040 plan. This exhibit here highlights the four different areas of the PUD. We have area A, which highlights the expansion of kind of the typical uh, box development we have there that goes west of the Fresh Market, but then leads into a new amenity feature along the lake side. Um, this facility, uh, this project's looking at incorporating a promenade with some gazebos, a decorative fountain, and a nice walkway feature that will be integrated into the new development and expand into the existing development. Uh, it's going to include some green areas shown in area A, just east to the park. Uh, area B and C are the outlots. Um, and then area D is included in the PUD, which is actually on the uh, east side of Cumberland Road, but just north of 116th Street. In working with this petitioner, um, we pulled similar uses from the yard that are prohibited and allowed. So this is going to prohibit a lot of the uses that are not allowed in the yard. So no tobacco shops, kind of standalone liquor stores. Um, other than some large uh, specialty retailers that may not be in the market today. Uh, so this is geared towards, again, a higher-end user. Um, as I mentioned in first reading, typically we would like to see the buildings closer to the street, but given this project location, there's a 100-foot easement from the utility, from the Marathon gas pipeline that doesn't allow any buildings or trees. And that pipeline is just north of our right-of-way on 116th Street, so that's why the buildings are set back further from uh, the street than we would normally re request from a development. Um, and those buildings are actually pushed as close as they can be. Uh, we've worked with the applicant to try to mitigate that through a street, street, a street tree program on 116th Street and some mounding. Um, in the earlier comments, staff had concerns about some of the drive through discussions. We've come into agreement with that, and now we're only allowing two drive throughs one would be in area C, and then one would be in area B, and the one for C is geared towards a bank, and then B would be a coffee user, and those would be the only two allowed by right. Any other future drive throughs uh, would need to come to the city for f future approval. Um, the other uses, again, would gear towards retail and other, some other restaurants and then other specialty items. The center was geared around trying to create this connectivity, uh, maybe with the idea of bringing in LA Fitness, having kind of a recreational feature. So again, from the Fishers 2040 plan, it, we knew we were gonna have retail continued growth in the city, but it was really about creating a sense of place so that with the struggles in the retail market, we hope to have um, a site plan that creates a place where people wanna be, even if they're buying goods online, but now you have an opportunity to enjoy this environment, which would hopefully bleed over into the success of the retailers here. 
And so again, I'll highlight real quickly, here's a more featured um, area of the open space commitment with a park, which we might utilize some potentially like a playground, like pocket park setting or some art features that we're still working out. Those details are described in the, um, in the PUD. Uh, here's the street trees I highlighted. Again, we wanna incorporate a nice street tree pattern along 116th Street to mitigate uh, the fact that there'll be no trees in this parking lot for the first 100 feet. And then the architecture we discussed um, originally about trying to match some of the center, but also having some flexibility. Uh, the PU, at the Plan Commission, our president thought it was nice to see one of the buildings might incorporate a different kind of, have limestone, which is different than some of the, the brown and tan they've seen. Um, but there was still some discussion before today's meeting up to today even where a new PUD was sent out with for some revisions with increased architectural standards for some faux windows and some other kind of entry features as well as trying to enhance the streetscape appeal, maybe creating more pedestrian area for patio seating. And so those changes have been incorporated today. And then there's also a uh, new language in there, similar to the yard, that the director or the mayor will have the opportunity to approve the preliminary architectural plans before it goes to the PUD for the final plans. So staff was initially only recommending second reading. Today we are asking now that you suspend the rules. All the concerns have been addressed and we would ask for second and third reading of this item tonight. And with that, I'm open to any questions and the petitioner's here as well if you have any questions for, for him as well. Okay. Thank you, Tony, appreciate it. Any, uh, Ken, did you want to make any comments? No, Okay. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I think only from the Planning Commission side. I think, uh, I think it went through pretty well, and, and Rich and, and Brad jump in here if, if you have any comments. But I certainly appreciate Ken's willing to work with, with staff. I realize that there was some, kind of some tenuous times as we were going through and looking at the south side of 116th Street and then what would happen on the north side. So I think we've come to a, a, a great solution, honestly, uh, and, and I appreciate both uh, Republic's work and, and uh, our Sunbeam's work and, and and our staff's work to get this thing done. I think Butch pointed out some obvious things going, yeah, we need to kind of spread ourselves out a little bit and not do everything in red brick and things like that. So I think that's what he wanted to tell us. The one comment that he did make, and he told me I absolutely had to share this. He said, so if we have a park, let's make sure that we have how big the park is gonna be. He said, because he was told there was gonna be a clock that you could see from across the, the way down at 116th and Olio Road that he still can't see today. So he said, just make sure we, we put those kind of standards in there. And I don't think those guys are gonna have any problems with that because I think it was drawn out pretty well. But Butch was very specific with me saying, make sure you bring that point up. Uh, if there's no other questions, I'll, I'll make a motion to suspend the rules. Oh, we gotta have public hearing though first, don't we? Right, Let's, Chris? Just a public oh, comment. Okay, okay. Just, okay. Yeah. so I, I'm, I'd make a motion to suspend the rules anyway. Okay, is there anyone from the public that would like to make any comments? Seeing none, would you like to? They, um, that, and motion to suspend the rules and approve on this. I'll second. Okay, motion to suspend the rules by Pete and seconded by Rich. So just on that motion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Against? And, and now I'll make a motion to go ahead and approve. Okay. Second. Motion by Pete to approve and seconded by Todd. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> Great, thank you. Congratulations. Okay, now we have uh, really 2021 20, and 22 are kind of similar. So I know we'll vote on them and, and kind of talk about them separately, but I don't know if you want to combine some of those, are they somewhat? Sure, I was definitely going to combine 21 and 22. Okay. Uh, they are contiguous lots. So uh, we'll start with item number 20, uh, I'm sorry, 20. Uh, for the record, my name is Taylor Navarre. I'm a planner with the Community Development Department. Uh, this item is a voluntary annexation for a little over three acre parcel on East 96th Street, uh, just west of Cynthia Ann Road and east of Georgia Road. Uh, the lot is currently under uh, construction for single family residents. Um, it was a single family lot and was as part of the redevelopment, several uh, structures were uh, removed. Uh, one was remaining, which they did seek a variance for, for from the Board of Zoning Appeals to utilize an existing accessory structure on the lot. Um, and as part of that approval, uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals put the uh, commitments on the approval that the parcel be annexed uh, or the property owner voluntarily annexed into the city and that the property owners come into an agreement 
with the city as far as the construction of the shared use path along 96th Street um, in compliance with our Fisher's 2040 plan. So all of that has already um, been agreed to and as such we're here for the voluntary annexation. Um, so with that uh, staff would request that we hold second or first and second reading and the public hearing and come back for a third reading and the fiscal analysis. Okay. So I'd be happy to answer any questions on this lot. Okay. <clears throat> With that, uh, I'll go ahead and open it up for a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on this matter, which is 15562 East 96th Street, please come forward. <laughs> Seeing none. Uh, <laughs> Jennifer, please note that no one um, rose to sp speak. And uh, so you just uh, first and second reading. Mo motion, motion. first and second reading. So move. Taylor, if you want to take it away on the next ones. Sure, so I will present both of these next items together. Um, although they're on separate slides uh, or location maps, these are two lots in the, the Geist. The maps are there, Brandon, you see. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I can give them some pointers uh, maybe sometime later this week on how to do a presentation. Um, these two lots are in the Geist Estates single family subdivision. Um, Again, these are being redeveloped or developed for single family residences. And uh, these are looking to connect to city utilities. So as such, um, they're required to annex, um, but they have voluntarily uh, submitted for annexation. Um, again, this is part of just filling in the, in the gaps here in the community. Um, uh, we'll pull up the other slide just for the record there. So it's the northern two parcels and the Geist Estates lots both are approximately two acres in size. So with that uh, staff request that we hold first and second reading and public hearing. Okay. Chris, since these are two agenda items, do I need to open them up separately? You do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So item 21, which is 14300 East 116th Street, we'll open that up for a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on this matter, please step forward. Seeing no one, uh, Jennifer, please note that no one uh, rose to speak. And then let me just go ahead and do that for the second one. Uh, so we'll open it up for public hearing for 13302 East 116th Street. Anyone wishing to speak on that? Seeing none, we'll close that. And Jennifer, please note that no one rose to speak on either one of those. Motion to have first and second reading on both 20 and 21. Is that correct? Or am I at 21 and 22? Uh, 21 and 22. 21 and 22. Okay. We've had those. Thank you, Taylor. So we'll move to uh, 23, Megan. Good evening, I'm Megan Schaefer. Uh, I'm a planner with the Community Development Department. And this item is for first reading to request approval of an amendment to the Vermilion PUD. So there's going to be two parts to this uh, text amendment. First, the existing development is between Connecticut Avenue, so it's on the north and south of this road. The expansion would be just north of 101st Street, uh, west of the county line. So the first part of the text amendment is for an additional 40 acres to be added to the subdivision. So this would consist of 90 lots. Mm -hmm. This is the amended concept plan uh, that includes this addition. So this also includes, I believe, seven common areas. Um, in one of those common areas, they are gonna have a conservation area with a trail, and they are working with us to provide a trail around the pond to the south, and also to provide um, kind of an internal connectivity map um, and how they're going to also connect to the park to the north, which is Creekside Park, and any other um, public space around that development. Uh, the second part of this text amendment would be for the uh, increase in impervious surface coverage for three areas of, so that'd be area A, area D, and area E. So the petitioner requests 50% uh, impervious surface area in area A, and then 45 percent in areas D and E. Um, they are working with us to limit the number of lots that will have uh, 
that will be allowed to go up to that 50% and 45% in those areas. Uh, the petitioner is here to answer any questions, and then I can answer any questions you may have as well. Any questions at this point? Maybe not. Uh, in a second, uh, would the petitioner like to speak? Good evening, Mr. President, members of the City Council. For the record, my name is Steve Harden. I'm a partner in the law firm of Fagri Baker Daniels. I'm pleased to be representing Republic Development before you tonight. With me from Republic Development is Mr. Larry Moon, and our land use consultant, India Olson, is here with us as well. Thank you, Megan, for your introduction to the project. That was spot on, and hopefully this will work. Walk you through a few exhibits. So, this project was originally approved back in May of 2006. 338 acres was the original. It had a lot of uh, beautiful land and terrain, and if any of you have been out there, you'll see that it is quite active right now. If you haven't been out there, it's a great opportunity to go out and see it. The um, home builders that are out there are a variety. Uh, we've got David Weekly Homes. We're building the empty nester development part of the, uh, in the, in part of the project. And that's up in this area here. And Cal Atlantic is building down in Area D. Beezer is over here in Area E. And then a variety of other builders, Estrich, uh, Drees, and others are building in the larger lot areas here that are all under construction today. The 40 acres, we really have two issues here. One is the original reason why we're here, which is the addition of the 40 acres, which is down in the southeast quadrant of the property, which is bounded on the north by area E, and on the west by area D, and by the, on the south, 101st Street, and on the east, the Hancock County line. So some of the things that have been incorporated into this are, you'll notice the stub streets and connections to incorporate within the existing project, as well as providing two connection points to the east for that farmland, if that is ever developed. And when we met with the staff, we talked about how this incorporates, yeah, you can't see it too well, but to the north uh, is the proposed Fall Creek Woods, and a portion of that land was conveyed to the township from Republic as part of this project. You might remember the original concept plan shows it up here. It was known back then, at least in the PUD, as Creekside Park, and now it has the new concept plan for the park, Fall Creek Woods, and that is a key component and a nice amenity for the neighborhood here. And then also to the south, you can see the city's Flat Fork Creek Park, which is located right here along 101st Street, just a stone's throw away from this neighborhood as well. So the 40 acres is pretty straightforward. This is just adding the 40 acres into the PUD ordinance. This, the proposed builder there is Cal Atlantic. Uh, their homes were uh, submitted as part of an updated PUD last year in 2016. Those homes are expected to average around $375,000. Uh, the homes Cal Atlantic is building right now in Area D, those are averaging around $575,000. And David Weekly Homes, the empty nester homes, are averaging approximately $440,000 uh, that are out there. So that's the main reason we're here, is to add the 40 acres into the existing PUD ordinance. Uh, the other reason that we're here is because as we were going through that, uh, some pre-filing means with the staff, the staff was kind enough to point out to us that there, had, there were a few of the building permit applications that have been submitted for area A, I believe, uh, which is again in the empty nester area, that they uh, had a lot coverage in excess of 35%, which is the under the UDO currently is a 35% lot coverage standard which means you take the total lot area and then you take a look at the impervious surface, the driveway, the pools, the, anything that's asphalt or concrete essentially. So the building, the house footprint and then anything else that would be impervious. And then there's a percentage in the city's UDO that the, if you have R2, you're at 35%. If you're at R5, I believe it's 45%. So it, it changes as the lots get smaller in recognition that you're going to have home sizes and the percentages are going to be different as the lot sizes change. Back when we did this project originally in 2006, we had a chart in the PUD ordinance that identifies, says that we'll generally default to the R2 standards except as modified and then the developer and the developer's attorney 
who was me at the time, we went through and modified those standards we'd identified that needed to be updated. We didn't think at the time to recognize that the empty nester area, small lots, they're gonna to need to have a much different lot coverage maximum than we had to default to the larger lot R2 standard. So long story short, the staff pointed that out to us last week. We checked with the builders and they're in the process of trying to identify the number of homes, the floor plans, and just you know how do we come up with a standard that will be narrowly tailored but will allow them to continue building. They've got, I think, uh, seven different home buyers that have uh, <coughs> under different phases of submitting building permits right now. And so our hope is we get everything worked out with the staff. This has been, the home plans haven't changed for a year and a half. So I don't know necessarily how they've been approved in the past. We're not asking about that. We're wanting to just fix the procedural issue. Um, and so we plan to work with the staff between now and plan commission in July to have narrowly tailored for each of these different areas, not just global blanket increases to the maximum, but to identify with the builders their current floor plans and what would that standard be and, and provide enough flexibility so that the homes, the quality homes that you see out there now, which I think everybody is very favorably impressed with, will be able to continue to move forward. So our hope would be work that with the staff between now and planning commission and hopefully have that all worked out and, and in a perfect <coughs> world we'll be able to be back in front of you in July rather than trying to go to the BZA with variances in July for a handful of building permits. So thank you for the, the indulgence. Let me explain what was ha what, what's happening and um, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have for us tonight. Thank you. Any questions, Brett? Steve, yes, sir. Uh, is that Hancock County or is that Fort Worth? It's currently, well, it's Hancock County, but I think Fortville intends eventually to annex to that area. But today it's not in the city limits. That's correct. Okay. Is that correct, Larry? I, I believe that's correct. You just Sure, we will. And, and, and out, of, out of respect to the neighbors, but. Sure, yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Yep. Yeah, this is we are forcing you to do something by the airway. So the next guy that tries to develop that has Okay, we'll do. Republic probably would have done this anyway. They, they've you know, developed Saxony, you're probably familiar with Saxony, and they're very thoughtful developers, so I think they would agree with you that that's normally good planning to do that connection. But we'll double check with Hancock County and Fortville. By the way, I heard uh, Meg, I, I heard Megan mention 50%, and that may be accurate. That that's what we were told by one of the development team members for Area A. I, my understanding is that David Weekly Homes, if you drive out there and you look at the model home, that's at 59%. So these are really nice looking homes. They comply with all the setbacks. So we're it's a work in progress on what the actual numbers need to be. But I will answer your question right now on the setback, the rear setback. Is 20 feet. 20 feet. And so they are going to have to be padded. Because I assume that house would probably be about 20 feet from the park line or 20 feet from the 10 foot easement line. You might just summarize your concern because we'll have further discussion about it. Planning Commission. Yeah. This is yes. just this is just an example. This is the model home, and this is showing the um, a 45 foot space between the property line and the back of the building, the home, and there's a porch right here. It's just an example. That lot maybe is a little bit deeper than some of them, so it's not. I'm not trying to say this how they all are, but it's a good question. Thank you. My, my only comment is, um, you know, just on the surface, it seems like something um, that, you know, that I shouldn't have a problem with, but I, I guess my one area of concern will be just the compatibility of the new 40 acres with that which is existing, acknowledging that there's, you know, a lot of very positive momentum, but just, you know, there's some frontage um, that I'd like to be sensitive to so that 
both in home quality, lot widths, and all that, that you know, it, there, there's some compatibility. It appears that way on the concept plan. So again, we'll talk about that further. Thank you. And then the only other item I'd like to add is is Brian Bale, one of our uh, township uh, um, council people, had made a request to the PUD. I just want to make sure we answer all those questions when it gets in front of planning commission. Don't need that answer tonight. And what's good, what's bad, what's going to work, what's not going to work. But I want to make sure we have all those addressed as well. And I had a chance. We just got that today as well. And I shared with both Doug and Brian that we'd be happy to, if, as long as it's not affecting or slowing down. Happy to facilitate with whatever they can work out. Thank you. Any other questions? Is there a motion? Steve, Steve, I have one quick question. What about the back, the elevations of the yeah. homes, like the ones backing up to like the trail and the the woods? I just, I know in one of the past developments, um, we had looked at the the back elevation to kind of make it aesthetically architecturally pleasing so that you know um is there I just a particular didn't know. Er, I mean, are you referring to the new 40 acres here there's well i just i know we received I'm, my question is we just received the front elevation so i just wanted to like just make sure that the back of the elevation of the homes look sure, sure. just I know nice reading, yeah. so i did we didn't get a picture of it but just sure. want to make that aware to okay. your group yeah thanks and so, so I think it was it was the two that Corby just brought through. Yep. I think so you'll yeah. Probably, yeah. Bridger Pines. That's mm -hmm. exactly. We had I the, forget it, the name. We'll look at that for plan permission. Okay. Oh, wait, Thank thanks. you. Okay. There's a motion for first reading. Any other questions? And again, uh, just for the public, uh, August second for the plan commission, and then September. Uh, actually, 18th. this is going to July. This goes to July. Did you tell? Okay. Say it again, just so everybody can hear. July twelfth. July twelfth. Is that correct? India? Okay. We moved it because it's so close to the 4th of July. Right. So we moved okay. it to the 12th. It is July 12th. Here. Thank okay. you. Sorry, it Thank wouldn't you. change here. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Item 24, Mr. Gutierrez. Last time up here, for the record, Oscar Gutierrez, City Controller. The ordinance you have in front of you is to approve <coughs> the issuance of city sewer works revenue bonds for 2017. Uh, this is in the amount of $12,700,000. When the city passed the sewer rate increase, this was built into the capacity of the revenues to take on these additional projects. <laughs> If you look at the packet that you were given, there are four main projects that will be covered. Um, Cheney Creek uh, Water Treatment Plant Expansion, 106 uh, Street Sewer, uh, Force Main Street, Force Main Improvements, uh, and then Sanitary Sewer Expansion and Facility Upgrades. This is all within a capital plan, and we are currently receiving enough revenues from the increase to support uh, additional debt uh, issuance. And this was passed by both the Board of Works unanimously as well as the Finance Committee. And I'm happy to entertain any questions that you may have. I think the <clears throat> remaining question that we had from the Finance Committee was just a project start and time to completion estimate. Uh, I can tell you the force main is under design currently okay. with the uh, hope to bid yet this fall. Construction potentially start this fall. It would work from... Um, at this moment, it would work from the treatment plant backwards towards uh, 106th Street Interchange, uh, probably throughout the fall and winter. Uh, the plant would uh, be somewhere in that same timeline as well. The main uh, project is the force main. That is a significant uh, multi-million dollar, probably 10 to $12 million project in itself. Make a motion to suspend the rules and approve on first reading. Second. So motion by Pete, second by Selena. Cecilia? All those in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 Now motion to approve. Motion by uh, Pete, second by Todd. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those, anybody opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. Brandon, number 25. Good evening, everyone. For the record, Brandon Dickinson, Director of Economic Development. Um, 
The item I have before you is an ordinance of the City of Fishers uh, amending Chapter 98 as it relates to the uh, noise ordinance. So the purpose of the ordinance uh, is to allow an exception to the noise ordinance for entities located in the Nickel Plate District. So as we continue to grow and create the vibrant downtown that we have, we notice that we've got some limitations that are artificially preventing people from having uh, live entertainment, outdoors, Friday night, Saturday nights, et cetera. And so what we wanted to do here was to um, create that opportunity for folks while still regulating it to make sure that there aren't conflicts with other events that are going on. So events such as the AMP, uh, After Dark, et cetera, want to make sure that none of these uh, events with live music, et cetera, compete with each other. So what we would do is we would um, provide for an application and a permit on the Fisher's website. And then we have a uh, special events committee that uh, is comprised of police, DPW, uh, and parks department. That group would review uh, the application, see if there are any conflicts, uh, negotiate any uh, difficulties that might come up with, some competing interests. Uh, we're gonna kind of treat this as a pilot program. Uh, to start out, let's see what lessons we can uh, learn from this and we would try and uh, keep the permit price at a, at a pretty low um, level so that it's not prohibitive for anyone that wants to do ongoing events in uh, the downtown area. So um, the uh, permit will be limited to the number of events that the special event committee in its discretion uh, sees appropriate. So okay. anyways, that's, that's this item. It's not really an economic development uh, item per se but it really does <coughs> correlate well to what we've tried to attract downtown and now that we've got some of that critical mass and vibrancy, we want to make sure that we have appropriate uh, rules and regulations in place to allow for these type of events. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions members might have. This is just for the Nickel This is solely for the Nickel Plate District. The, well, the entities, are you talking like <coughs> restaurants or maybe some of the companies that have like rooftop outdoor workspace where they could is is that what you're anticipating those requests from yeah them? so uh four day ray um i'm sure we're going to have a few more we're creating kind of a rooftop scene almost in, in the nickel play district the uh, braden building has a uh, rooftop terrace uh, the uh, new one north project has uh, terracing as well uh, the switch uh, there, the uh, offices at the switch have one. So we anticipate this being a continuing trend, uh, and we want to just make sure that we've got the appropriate um, checks and balances in place. I was going to ask the same question that these guys had, but kind of a little different. I'd look at um, 116th Street North a little different than 116th Street South. So I was thinking you were going to say exactly what you just did. I was at Four Day Ray on Saturday. They had a little guitar and some other things upstairs. And then I could see as the weather gets better, they could probably move that to that little courtyard, that little patio area. Mm -hmm. And you probably have some other opportunities there. But then the south side, it seems like we're getting more residential, some of the newer projects. And then some of the existing residents are there. So I guess it sounds like it's just more of a kind of a clearinghouse just to check to make sure that as things happen that we know about it. And we yeah, can exactly. just kind of gauge how that goes. It, it's really, if you, I think at its core, it's a communication component that allows us to make sure that people are aware uh, I'm sure one of the things that we can work on is some sort of uh, hosting of mm -hmm. upcoming events so uh, citizens can check on our website, see what things are coming in the downtown area that you know might be uh, these special events for live entertainment, et cetera. Uh, so I think one of the other components of this will be making sure that whoever is hosting something, especially if you know uh, Archer's Meat Market wants to do live entertainment or whatnot, that's mm -hmm. obviously more on the residential side of the Nickel Plate District. We'd encourage them to reach out to their neighbors and, and make sure that um, they've kind of knocked on doors. And, well, and uh, to, to be clear, too, in this ordinance, uh, there's a special event committee would have the right to deny a permit. So even though everyone exists within the Nickel Plate Code could potentially file for this, that doesn't mean that they're necessarily entitled to it. So that, that group of public safety professionals and everyone else will make the determination whether or not that that's an appropriate use at the time. That's a good point. Any other questions? Motion to approve. Second. Need a motion to suspend? Oh. Right, that's what your motion is. Doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. I'll that's what I'm here for, Pete. Motion to approve our first reading. <laughs>
Motion by Pete, seconded by uh, Todd. Mike, you were actually first. Todd. By Rich, by Todd. We'll give Todd the second. And that is just for this motion to suspend the rules. All those in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Now motion to approve. Motion by Pete, seconded by Rich. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Thank, Thank you, Brandon. You <laughs> David, item number 26 has been continued as well. Okay. We're down to 27. Mr. Bogato. 26 or 27. Okay, Director, of, uh, for the record again, Tony Bogato, Director of Planning and Zoning. And the last item will be this state residential rezone. This item was before you for first reading and went to plan commission uh, two hearings, uh, first time uh, in May and um, due to some public, I think some confusion from the adjacent neighbors that weren't aware of the rezone, um, it was continued and we held a town hall meeting later in May to clarify what, um, what the rezone meant. And again, it's uh, going from today R2, which allows 1.7 units per acre to uh, a state residential, which is one unit per acre, so it's less dense, overall less impact for anything related to traffic, environmental concerns, or any other noise concerns that could come from development. I want to highlight the area shown in red is the initial <coughs> location and area that was introduced at first reading. <clears throat> and this is a close-up of that area. There, is, um, there has been one change between um, the first reading and the, pl the planning commission recommendation, and then tonight, the. 80 acres there right along Florida Road and 116, or 113th Street, I'm sorry, both on the north and south, has been removed from this request. Uh, that property owner has been under contract with the developer for several years now, and in working with them most recently, they brought a proposal that I'll just highlight tonight to show why this area has been removed. Your action tonight has nothing to do with this request. It'll come separately in front of you, uh, most likely next month in first reading, as well as a, a park agreement park fee agreement. But this proposal, they came to us after the plan commission hearing in May and said, you know, we'd like to work with the city and still develop this a little bit more dense on the north side, but we're willing to commit giving you the south side as a future park, um, as well as accommodate the right of way for the roundabout and then also looking at some detention area for their development to the north. So it's approximately 40 acres shown today, but those details have to be worked out in the agreement because, again, we'll lose some of the land due to road improvements and as well as detention ponds. But again, just to highlight, this 80 acres has been removed for that reason, and you'll see that at a separate time. So the request before you tonight is the remaining parcels, which should be about 15 lots. And again, this is consistent with the Fishers 2040 plan, which had designated this area for estate lots to try to get a diverse a set of housing so that we just didn't have these kind of smaller lots all around the east side of town. We wanted to maintain some large lots, some larger open space for a state type development and this is what that request would do tonight and we are asking for second and third reading. Do you have any questions of staff? Just, uh, just to make sure that they're, they're dedicating that right away. We will work, well Public Works is working with them on that. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. I'd really like them to dedicate that right away so we don't have to pay for it if we possibly can get away from that, right? And I understand they want to develop the other side, and we've been working with them, and I appreciate them working with us and getting park impact phase is my understanding for, for the deal. So I think there's some dedication right away because there's going to be that's going to be a major roundabout there. So I think that would be I would like to see that concession if that wasn't already in there from from them. But with that, I'm I'm okay with that, and I certainly appreciate them working to this conclusion and you as well with staff. So if there's no other questions or comments, I'll make a motion to suspend the rules. Any other questions? There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Pete, seconded by Rich. All those in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Pete, seconded by Eric. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Great, thank you. Mr. Mayor, anything else? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you.